Hello, and welcome to The Works. I'm Ben Che. And I'm Ben Peltier. Cellist Thomas Hung studied music at the Hong Kong Academy for Performing Arts and is now a member of the Academy's cello faculty. He's currently preparing for a cello recital at the Hong Kong City Hall in June. He'll be with us later to tell us more. Well, the COVID lockdowns and restrictions around the world have been bad news for many companies, industries and occupations. But enforced isolation has been relatively good for video games. Throughout 2020, video game revenue surged 20% to 179.7 billion US dollars. The industry outperformed both movies and sports combined as forms of entertainment. Video game development merges art, technology, interactive design, and often storytelling. Not only are a range of artistic disciplines involved, some games also provide new opportunities for artists and art lovers to explore. Advances in technology and in the connectivity of the internet increasingly allow us to experience art and cultural events in a variety of new ways, from virtual museum tours to online concerts. Sometimes, we can even find art in video games. Recently, the Hong Kong-based Sometimes Monastery Game Studio launched the game Forgetter, which brings together contemporary art and technology. It's currently being showcased in an ongoing exhibition at Present Projects. So we use When a hospital rejects me, I go to art museums. It's more fun. Because the game itself has a lot of setting, it's quite different. But the exhibition is a real place. So we can bring the real place to the real place. But the viewers will feel like there's a wrong idea, there's a wrong idea, there's a wrong idea, there's a wrong idea, there's a wrong idea. Alan Kwan has worked as a visual artist and game designer in the United States for more than a decade. Two years ago, he was invited by Alison Yang, founder of Sometimes Monastery, to co-design the new video game. Alison was curating like an art game show in Shenzhen, and she was kind enough to invite me to go to do a talk and exhibit like two games over there. And then, uh, I think that uh, we have like a pretty close artistic vision. It's more friendly. At the same time, Alison met this um, art collector from Paris, and then uh, they were brainstorming some ideas as well. So, like, I guess at some point, three of us have just like click, and then figure out how we should do like a game on like memories, contemporary art, um, and stuff like that. When I'm making games, like, I've always like been intrigued by the question that if I go into someone's mind, like what would the space like be like? What would the imaginations, what the memories be like? Okay, definitely the weirdest job I've had so far. So in this game, uh, there's like a um, high-tech company called a Mind Job, and what this company do is that he would uh, try to uh, recycle like uh, dead artists like minds. Like start with that. Like you um, first watch like a orientation video from the company, and then like you try to walk around like the company headquarters, and we use that space like to explain what the company does. We try to go inside the brain and try to clean up like all the trauma or dark memories, like a janitor. He refused treatment and saved the money for me. Players of the game enter the minds of two fictional deceased artists to destroy or erase traumatic memories embedded in or symbolized by different objects. Throughout like human history, like people always have the question that like, or oh, like for like a great artist like Van Gogh, like is the pain and like the trauma um, very important in his like art, right? Like if we take away like the trauma 
and the pain, can he still create like superb art, right? So this is like a question uh, that uh, we are trying to ask in this game. One of like the feature of our game is that uh, there's no uh, saving system. Like you cannot save the game. And we want to use that feature to push people to get deeper into like emotional experience with designs. What really matters to us is the emotional experience and the deeper level of storytelling. That's probably not super common in mainstream games that are mostly about puzzle solving, killing people, and stuff like that. Like we, we want people to experience like what artists are experiencing in the contemporary art world. What are they suffering? What causes like the childhood trauma, stuff like that. The idea for the collaboration came about in 2019 when co-designer Alison Yang met Sylvain and Dominique Levy, who had already been working on sharing their collection of Chinese contemporary art via a virtual museum. That inspired Alison to take it one step further and create a video game that incorporates the artworks. Though COVID-19 made it impossible for us to really work along with each other, but um, because Mr. Levy and his family are very experienced in making virtual content, so he already have a very uh, detailed catalog of all the paintings and uh, other installation work he collected. In this catalog, uh, DSL categorized all the Chinese artists into different parts, like some of them are younger artists, and uh, we have some part that dedicated to the new development in contemporary art history, so that's an easy find for us. And sometimes uh, he also categorized them by themes, uh, like some is about generation, some is about time or dystopia, and it's easy for us to catch too. Last year, and people are quarantine at home, so they couldn't really go to museum. And museums rely heavily on visitors. So a lot of museums are turning into virtual contents making. Some of them are making like 3D exploration art exhibitions, mostly using 3D scannings. And people can just go and see a virtual exhibition. Some of the museum went further. Uh, I think ours is an example on that side. Um, we take it to an extreme that we get rid of the museum facade. Like, you don't have to know it's a museum, like I said. Sometimes museums can be intimidating for people, or sometimes going to museum itself is a very uh, already middle class or higher class thing. Like, you have to fly to fancy cities that has good museums. Usually, before, people are making video games for museums, but we're making a video game as a museum. I think video game always contains similar kind of art contents or similar quality of art content, especially the crazy and funny part or thought-provoking part. So I think in that way, video game offers a solution to museums uh, to access to a younger or on Euro demographic they couldn't access before. The late author Leng Ping Kwan, or Yasi's collection of poems, City at the End of Time, includes his 1974 poem, The North Point Car Ferry. Like many of Yasi's poems, it attempts to pin down and analyze Hong Kong's unique identity far beyond the cliché of the city as a place where East meets West. The Ferry Pier itself and Yasi's poem are currently providing the backdrop for the multidisciplinary art walk before a passage which includes visual arts, interactive installations, soundscapes, performance, site-specific writing and reading, and yes, a walk.
Welcome back. Cellist Thomas Hung studied cello at the Hong Kong Academy for Performing Arts before going on to perform with orchestras in places as varied as Latvia, Taiwan and Macau. On the 18th of June, he'll be giving a recital in the Leisure and Cultural Services Department's Our Music Talent series. It includes pieces by Schumann, Frank, Mendelssohn and Dallabaco. Thomas is with us now to give us a preview. Well, Thomas, it's a delight to have you here on The Works. Uh, thank you for coming in. Thank you for inviting. <laughs> on the 18th of June at City Hall, mm -hmm. um, people can look forward to a rather interesting and eclectic program that you've put together. Right, right. Can you take me through the, the music and, and perhaps we'll go through it and, and see some of the interesting details about it? I love this program and it's like my dream repertoire. When LCSD called me, I already got these four pieces, like boom, 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 all together, right? Um, Frank Sonata and the Schumann, Adagio and Allegro, as you see, these are transcribed into cello. Usually they're doing a horn for the Schumann and um, violin or even flute in the Frank Sonata. So I think it really matured my playing, especially when I get into the university. It really matured my thinking, especially into the Romantic era. Before I was thinking it's all expose and emotional, physical techniques, young, just crashing each note together, chords. But then I realized when I'm playing the Schumann, it's all about inner feelings. And it's all about your inner emotion, how you bring it out with your fancy techniques. And so as the Frank, French morning, very misty opening. And of course, now we have to speak in the logical sense. For the Della Bacco and Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn, it's, the first impression is young, right? And passion. But then, it's all about heritage for the, these two pieces, and which is the core value I would like to bring out through this concert. So, you see, Mendelssohn's second movement, it is a tribute to Bach's chorale work. You can see the, the drum, ba -bum. you can layers, 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 and stage, stage, stage. And also there's a recitative part. And also for the Del Baco, you might not heard it before, and I think most of the people in Hong Kong never heard it. Since it's, he's the immediate successor of J.S. Bach, but J.S. Bach is like the monument of Baroque era. I, I think, Ben, you, you won't disagree me. He's like the god. So I think he overshaded lots of composers. Even for Della Bacco, I think he's one of the greatest cello composer for solo pieces, caprices, everything like that. And he's actually a neo-baroque composer. And I think he really inherited the legacy from Jazz Bach. You see different chord progressions, and you can see lots of hints from him. So I'm very excited to promote these to my audiences. As a cellist, this idea of playing solo cello, it's such, a, it's such an important aspect of being a cellist, isn't it? Exactly. It's part of your identity. Exactly. Uh, and I think it's from the solo cello, because you don't have anyone getting into your way. So you're basically doing your own thing, expressing it through the content and you really deliver the ideas of music. So I think music for me, there's three core values. First is the essence. So what is this piece, right? The background. And the second thing is the craftsmanship. Of course, it's like our polished techniques, everything like that. And the third thing, which is the most essential, the heritage. How you continue the legacy of the composers, how you deliver these into the public, the next generations, of course. And I think in solo cello, you can do it anywhere, any events you will like. For Del Bacos, or you say Jazz Bach, um, even closer, like Ligeti, um, Hindemith, everything like that, I can do it anywhere with my cello. I'm like a one-man band, after all. What specific capriccios would you like to choose to play for us today? I'm going to play the Caprice number one and two. And in the concert, I will do the 11 as well. And one and two, I think it's a great contrast in between. So the first movement, it's always dun, 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 bum, 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 bum. It's like a small dance among the groups. Because Della Bacco is 
mainly writing for the court. But you know, in the old days, it's not for everyone, right? I can't go to the court, maybe. And so that's why his audience group is quite limited. And after he passed away, not a lot of people remember. And for the second movement, in a very contrasting way, it's like a recitative. I would imagine like um, a man singer just out of the dark, just da -da 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 -da. it's you know it's groundbreaking. Sometimes you can think it. So I would like to deliver these two movements to and to the audience, of course, and share a little bit first. Well, I'll look forward to listening out for those details, especially. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you very much, Ben.